much. Next, we will hear from Mr. Robert McIntyre. Uh, he's director of the Citizens for Tax Justice. Thank you, Senator. Glad you're having this hearing today. We should have more like it because our tax system really is facing a crisis these days. Uh, offshore tax sheltering by our big companies is reaching epidemic proportions, but the Bermuda loophole just being one example of what's been going on. You know, I used to think I w we could all, almost everybody, could agree that we need taxes to run the country and that we can't run a tax system where people can choose to just opt out if they happen to have enough money and enough power. But I'm not sure we all can agree on that anymore. Uh, there's been a complete moral breakdown at the big accounting firms. You know, we singled out Arthur Anderson. Arthur Anderson was probably the best of them. Uh, you saw Ernst & Young earlier today. You saw Price Waterhouse Coopers Consulting almost move to uh, Bermuda before they got uh, scared away. Uh, the whole crowd of them just seem to have lost their moral compass. And they've been advising their corporate clients to do anything and everything to avoid paying for their share of supporting this country. And the main route has been to shift profits offshore. Call it tax shelters, call it inversions, call it what you want. It's all the same game they think of it as. It's not a very pretty game. And that is uh, to generate deductions in the United States, to generate income that magically ends up in Liechtenstein or Luxembourg or the Cayman Islands or the Bahamas or Bermuda or some other place that doesn't tax them. It's reprehensible behavior. And, you know, <laughs> the Bermuda example is so clear, so ugly, so awful, just renouncing your U.S. citizenship that you wouldn't think anybody would defend it. Who could? I mean, the Treasury Department did last spring, but Pam Olson came in here today and backed away from that. That's good. Uh, of course, that was Ernst & Young working at the Treasury at the time. Uh, before, after, and during, apparently. Uh, but there are some defending it, the, you know, the, the, anti, the knee-jerk anti-tax groups, you know, the Grover Norquist and the Cato Institutes and the Heritage Foundation. They've written letters to you endorsing inversions. Chamber of Commerce calls it, what do they call it here? Prudent decision-making to not pay any taxes on, their, on U.S. profits. Yikes. So there are some people that are in the sort of American mainstream here, uh, which is sad. Uh, my testimony goes into some of the arguments that are made in favor of the Bermuda loophole and why they don't make any sense. I was glad to see the Treasury Department endorse that because their, their uh, report last spring went in the other direction. But the, the funny argument for why we should keep the Bermuda loophole is coming from Accenture and a few of the other companies who say that they didn't go there for tax reasons. <laughs> well, in that case, I guess they won't mind, won't mind if we close the tax loophole. Now, will they? But most of the lobbyists admit it. They say, yeah, we went there to avoid paying taxes, but we did it so we wouldn't have to pay taxes uh, and so we could compete with our foreign competitors who don't have to pay taxes either. Well, that's just false. Uh, they're trying to avoid paying taxes on their American profits, and uh, as uh, Professor Arviano notes, uh, their uh, passive income, and that's all there is to it. We don't attempt in any way in this country to tax companies on truly foreign profits. We do attempt to try to make companies, whether they're foreign or American-owned, pay taxes on what they make in the United States. And the companies try to restyle their profits as foreign in order to avoid paying taxes here. That's what the fight is about, but it's gotten a lot worse lately. So my testimony, and I'm almost done here in time, has a lot of suggestions on what we ought to do in terms of uh, improving our tax code in this area. I, I urge you to be worried of what they're thinking about doing in the House of Representatives, which is to open up many of these loopholes far wider. That's the Chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, Bill Thomas's plan. And I urge you, as you talked about earlier today, that if you can get a Treasury Department of goodwill and an IRS of goodwill, that giving them the resources to work on this will help quite a bit. So, yeah, this is one of the ugliest issues anybody's seen in a while. But remember, it's just the tip of a large mountain of ugliness that's going on in the American business community and the accounting profession today. Thank you. Well, let me ask Mr. McIntyre, is it the case that a company that decides to change its mailbox and become a citizen of Bermuda is creating new jobs? No, they 
They don't create any jobs at all except perhaps for Ernst and Young and maybe a part-time job for somebody to check the mail in Bermuda. What they do do is stop paying taxes on their U.S. profits, and that's what we're talking about here today. The question is whether companies like people should have to pay something to support this country. Now, I guess if you think that we have to make our corporate system identical to the tax system of, let's say, Barbados, that we take the revenues down from what are already their second lowest in the last six decades, down to zero, let's say, uh, that we could then replace the revenue with, well, doggone if I know. Uh, that hasn't been brought up. But with, let's say we're talking about, once the economy comes back, $150 billion a year in revenue we need to replace. Uh, according to uh, the Chamber of Commerce, we should take it to zero, because that would be the competitive position. Well, yikes. I mean, that would mean raising income taxes on ordinary people by quite a bit. Or it would mean, you know, eliminating half the Defense Department. Take your pick. Mr. McIntyre, in your testimony, you talked about uh, the growth of abusive tax shelters and your great concern about that inversion being only one of them. Can you expand on that? Well, it looks like uh, between inversions and various other activities, uh, that companies are engaging in, sometimes some of them legal, some of them illegal, some of them right on the edge. It's probably uh, about a $50 billion a year loss to the government these days from offshore shelters. Uh, they got a big boost in the uh, uh, late 1990s with a mistaken Treasury regulation that basically opened the door to doing almost anything you wanted and getting around all of our subpart F anti-abuse rules by rooting it through a real country. We now run shelters that go through Germany on their way to Liechtenstein due to a mistake by the Clinton Treasury that when they tried to correct it, the House Ways and Means Committee said, oh no, you can open loopholes up by mistake, but you sure as hell can't close them. Uh, and that one is huge. When nobody knows, uh, the articles at the time when that was discovered called it the end of the corporate income tax. Uh, it hasn't got there yet, but it's on its way. Uh, so it's a huge problem and it needs to get addressed and it could get addressed very straightforwardly. Uh, Right now, we, we just have so many holes in our Swiss cheese of uh, anti-abuse rules that we need to step back a couple steps and say, wait a minute, we have anti-deferral for this, but no anti-deferral for that, so companies call this, that, and they win. How about we just get rid of deferral uh, and tax companies on what they make uh, worldwide, as it said, but with a full credit for foreign taxes? Uh, paid so that, you know, the rounding error on how much companies, American companies pay in their foreign income, I mean, with a rounding error, the amount paid is zero. I'm not sure. It might be slightly negative, uh, possibly, you know, $100 million a year, but I think probably closer to minus something. Uh, so, you know, yeah, we tax companies on their foreign profits or what they'd like to call their foreign profits, and we say they aren't foreign because they aren't. But we don't tax them on real foreign profits. They know that. Uh, and uh, they are just trying to recharacterize their income. So you, anyway, we're back to what you started with, and I'm rambling here. But the foreign tax shelter, offshore tax shelter issue is threatening to swallow the whole corporate income tax. Bermuda, fortunately, has focused the public's attention on it. We need to strike while the iron is at least slightly warm, or uh, we will be looking for ways to pay for our government uh, and we won't be able to find them in the future.